Let's talk about Maridon. These are my initial thoughts. This Pokemon has got two main movesets. One is like a duped up Hyper Voice Sylveon, and the second one is sort of like a speed start that we've never seen before. It might be our first sort of special attacking speed start. It's the build I'm super addicted to. I've played two games with that speedster build so far, and I absolutely love it. So let's get straight into it. The first build I'm going to talk over is this kind of speedster sort of special attacking speedster build. It is Electro Drift and Parabolic Charge. You t I've taken this Pokemon to the jungle three times. I've played three games with it and I'm just sharing my thoughts here. Um, first things first, it's not very good into a Meanlock Umbreon, right? Because you need that mobility. It's a speedster. So, and you're quite squishy as well. So you definitely don't want to do that. But this Pokemon has got a high skill cap. And you're going to see how I play this encounter here. I use my eject button to get further away from the enemy. So I don't die in that sort of charging up process there. Um, and then, yeah, that gives me my Unite move. And I'm actually able to get a Quadra kill on... Um, one of my first games, I think it was my second game playing Maridon, which is honestly ridiculous. Um, this Pokemon is very, very strong, right? It's quite strong. You can see the Unite move um, does quite a lot of damage from a very safe distance. And yeah, you can engage with that Electro Ball and you can use that Parabolic Charge. I'm not going to explain how the Pokemon works. I'm going to have a full detailed Maridon guide very, very shortly for you guys because I want to get it right. But this is just my initial thoughts and I'm sharing all the good stuff and the bad stuff and just cutting out all the boring stuff in my first three games. So this Pokemon is, honestly, it's very strong. It's very, very strong. But it feels like the most balanced X license release with had. So this is definitely a bonus because I'm all for looking about the positive side of this game. It's also the one with the highest skill cap. Um, I really, really like it, especially, and it feels like you've got two builds that do two completely different things. So you can kind of flex into both builds and keep the same items. So I really, I actually like it quite a lot. Right, this Pokemon is heaps of fun. Um, I don't think he's too, you know, like you can get yourself out of position there, like you can see with that Electro Drift. So, yeah, you gotta be careful with this Pokemon, but I think it's a lot of fun. The other build here, this is Charge Beam, and I believe the other move is um, Thunder, right? So Charge Beam is sort of like, you have two sort of like charged up attacks and then you launch off this big broken version of Hyper Voice. So that is one version of the charge you just saw there. This is the second version. And then um, you've got to manage, you know, the, the gauge that you've got in the electric terrain with its ability and everything. Um, but yeah, this Pokemon, honestly, it, it fits a very different role and plays very differently to that um, initial build that we had. You play from range, you make sure you've got your front line uh, with your team and thunder this this move it's sort of like pikachu's thunder except it locks onto the enemy so it, it feels like fire spin in a way as well as uh like thunderbolt from pikachu and you can see the range on this move is honestly ridiculous um if you're versing a a team that's got poor mobility like it, it feels like a Chandelure kind of hyper voice Sylveon. Again, it's not ridiculously broken because you're pretty weak to dive, in my opinion. And if something dives on you, you're gonna see in this game, I get dove on by a Masquerada and it is not great for me. Um, so yeah, but if you're playing with the team, you can just see like the amount of range damage that this move has, this is gonna be a little bit scary in a very coordinated team. But if you're playing solo queue, um, and you're up against it, honestly, you can outplay this if, if, you, if you're if you really, really good with your dive Pokemon. Because when Maridon, this moveset, gets dived on, you're going to be feeling quite weak, right? So here's this Mouse, uh, Mouse Gerardo with a Comfey, and I have to, like, get away, right? If there weren't two berries there, I'm dead on my own base, right? But you can see the range. You're very, very good at defending goal zones with this Pokemon. Um, but the mobility is quite slow, okay? You'd have no skills that give you mobility. Um, you've just got, yeah, you're honestly a little bit reliant on your team. Um, nice little, oh, you know, I moved from the Trevenant there to stop the portal. But yes, so honestly, this build, I'm actually not really enjoying playing it that much. I've played one game with it, and it definitely felt very clunky in contrast to the other build. Um, however, you can do ridiculous ridiculous backline damage with this charge beam and this thunder and the unite move especially if you've got a blue buff these uh skills are almost permanently on cooldown late game so very very scary um you know you can see i'm taking forever to get my charge beam off there i'm like super super rookie with this move still trying to figure out how it works there um but yeah honestly 
Yeah, so this is where I get dove on by the Mouscarada, right? You can see you're pretty weak, right? Like I go into the bush to make sure he doesn't auto me, and then I think I can go back and engage on him. You die very, very quickly to something like a Mouscarada that can jump on you there. Okay, but you can see the value of the range here. You can hit over this Rayquaza wall. I haven't actually played this all too well. Again, first game kind of comes down to a flip there, but you can see the ridiculous range you've got on Charge Beam. Now, and I might have to practice using this in the practice mode to see where I can position. Um, but yeah, you can see you're going to get the value out of uh, Maridon's passive ability with the Electric Terrain when you dive in with that Electro Drift because you're going to be doing additional damage. So it's less team reliant. It's more of a solo queue build. But yeah, honestly, heaps of fun. But you've got to be careful with your engages here. And you can see when you charge up, you're very, very weak. You're very vulnerable. So that's why using an eject button to get further away from the enemies is a very, very um, fair and justifiable play, right? But the burst damage you do when you go in with that electro drift and the parabolic charge, you've got crazy mobility. You can get in and out of trouble. Um, so it, it honestly, this feels like a very, very high skill cap move. It's very, very fun. I'm going to be playing quite a lot more of this build. And guys, if you're excited to unlock Maridon, obviously I've bought this Pokemon with gems. Let me know in the comments. Or let me know if you think I'm a bit of a scumbag for using and purchasing this Pokemon. But I just want to show you guys how it functions. Have a very good one.